You're watching the Sporting Time Show with host Doug Thompson. Sponsored by Jewelry Barn and Pawn Shop. Good evening and welcome to the Sporting Time Show. Happy Saturday night. I'm Doug Thompson. And alongside me, the newlywed, Taryn Johnson, is back from his honeymoon. How are you, Taryn? <laughs> I'm great, Doug. I'm great. You know, I'm not as great as I was when I was on my honeymoon in Maui, <laughs> but I am doing great. It's great to be back here with you. You know, we had a pool going here at the <laughs> office that, does he come back? Does he stay in Hawaii? Do you become a surfer? I know what what Man. happens but you did come back. I was, I was that, I was that, that close, close to foregoing <laughs> this. Doug, you know, I love joining you on the Sporting Time Show, but the surfing life was calling me <laughs> on the beaches of Maui. I got to be honest with you. So I have never been to Hawaii, but I, I know some folks that have, and they said it is absolutely just beautiful. Like, it, and, yeah. I mean, to, to go there for a honeymoon, uh, to be there with your new bride. I mean, it just, it had to be just great. Oh man, it, it's hard to put into words, Doug. Um, I had always wanted to go to Hawaii as well. Like, like it sounds like you do it. That was always on my bucket list. And the honeymoon was a perfect uh, reason to go. But Hawaii, it was so interesting because it felt like we were in a different country, even though we weren't. It was like, <laughs> that's how far away from the United States it right, is. You right. know, it's as close to the US as it is to Japan and Australia. So, like, it was wild being there, but it was absolutely beautiful. Um, we have so many great pictures of I just, bet. like, the scenery that was there, and it was, it was mind-blowing. It, it lived up to the hype, Doug. Well, you know, here we've got, we've got some photos of the, the newlywed. Obviously, your, your wife, Brittany, absolutely beautiful, beautiful bride. Uh, you're, you're pretty handsome yourself, <laughs> uh, all decked out for the wedding. Um, did you think a lot about fourth region baseball and softball when you were in Hawaii. I mean, just be honest. You know, Doug, I had a lot of things on my mind, but I couldn't get that fourth region baseball off it. <laughs> I bet. I bet. I bet. <laughs> even, even on my honeymoon after the busiest week yes. span of my life, I was still thinking about Eli Burwash and how he's breaking <laughs> for the Bowling Green Purples, man. Well, uh, we're going to get to the Purples uh, uh, after our interview with, uh, with Brandon. We're going to talk a little baseball, but uh, I want to get back quickly to the wedding because, you know, Joe Bronk also got married yes, the same sir. day. Um, a lot of anticipation, but you got married in Chicago. Yes, sir. So it was a road trip, uh, a lot of family, friends coming in from all yeah. over the United States. Uh, you weathered that just fine. Yeah, it was really special, Doug. I, I know we have talked about this um, off air before, but I was really nervous that I was going to lose my composure you know, when, when Brittany started walking down the aisle, because that's just how I, I right. am. I, I, I'm not afraid to show emotion. Yeah. Um, luckily for me, I, I didn't. I didn't. I kept it all together by a string, by yep. a string, but I was able to keep it all together. And it, it was just a real emotional day. You know, it, it's a day that you look forward to or you point to when you're growing up. Right. And then the day is there. And, and, you know, you get engaged and you have the countdown till your wedding day, and then the day is there. It's and and it, it, you know, no matter how long the wait is, it, yeah. it always seems to sneak up on you. And that's certainly how it was for me and for Brittany. Um, but you know, I think we did a great job of kind of stepping back during the day itself and during the reception um, and, and just like, like viewing everything and really taking in the moment. And thank um, goodness you were able to have a wedding, yeah, right? And have yeah, yes, people come in, because, you know, a year ago or so, yeah. you couldn't have that. And as far as you know, showing your emotions, it does kind of take away from the photos when the groom has, you know, a handful of puffs, you know, <laughs> dabbing his eyes as his bride walks down. But I, I had full confidence in you that you, you know, game day you were going to have, you know, you were going to show up. I was Kobe in the fourth. <laughs> Kobe's my favorite favorite mm -hmm. professional athlete, and I, I embodied that mama you mentality the ball. You in the, to take in the, the shot. fourth quarter. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. But I, I held it together. But it, it's great to be back. I missed you. I yeah. missed being being here on the Sporting Time well, Show. Well, we missed you as well. And again, great photos uh, of the big of the big day. Now, of course, Brandon Phillips is on deck as we get ready to talk not baseball but football. Warren County Youth Football League uh, has pre-registration. Thank goodness. Those uh, young kids are going to be able to play football. It is a huge organization, and uh, we're going to help Brandon get the word out and talk to him about that. Also, uh, when we come back from the interview, you and I have got some catching up to do on high school baseball, which uh, 
Uh, I've got an interesting comment or observation about one of the teams in the fourth region that you and I will talk about. I can't wait to hear it. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get all of that. But we're going to take a short break. When we come back, Brandon Phillips joins us right here on the Sporting Times show, WNKY, NBC 40. We will be right back. Welcome back. I'm very excited to introduce my next guest. He is, well, he is a social media consultant. He is, well, he's written his latest book, If You Were Only Half As Smart As Me. He also is the Director of Communications for the Warren County Youth Football League, and he's a great friend of the Sporting Times. I want to welcome in Brandon, Dr. Brandon Phillips. Brandon, welcome to the show. <laughs> Okay. Hey, Doug, thanks for having me. So what part of that wasn't quite true? I would say other than my involvement with the Warren County Youth Football <laughs> League, none of it was true. But it sounded really good, and I'm fine with it. <laughs> well, wait a second. What about being a good friend of the Sporting Times? Actually, that was. Okay. And I just didn't know if you still held me in that regard. And yes. in regards to the social media, I did notice I still have admin privileges to the Sporting <laughs> Times. Did. So you better be careful. <laughs> Uh, I always wanted to have a doctor on the show and somebody that has written a book, so I thought I'd just throw that in there and see how it went. But uh, <laughs> anyway, welcome well, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me, man. I'm excited to be back. It's been a while. It has been a while. And, you know, when I, when I talked to you about the Warren County Youth Football League, uh, it just made me feel so good because it meant that things were, were going to be back to normal uh, right. this fall. And... For these kids that miss the opportunity to play not only football, but all the other sports, uh, there's got to be a lot of excitement. I saw the social media post uh, yesterday. Uh, it got a lot of traction. And right. I would say uh, people are in the same boat as I am where they're, they're just ready to go. Yeah, we're very excited. Obviously, last year, understandably, was a, a real disappointment. And it was interesting as we tried to delay the season as long as we could to allow for new information to come in. And yeah. we were working very closely with the Warren County Parks Department and the schools to find out if there was any way that we could do a couple of things. Number one was provide uh, a quality league. Uh, and number two, but probably most important one that was safe and that could really manage the guidelines and the expectations of where we were as a community as it related to COVID-19 yeah. at the time. And ultimately, can we give a safe experience? And so as we evaluated all of that and time went on, it just became more and more of a challenge. And we made the ultimate decision uh, in partnership with All Involved to suspend the season last year. So with that being said, we are so excited to move ahead now and look forward to the 2021 season. Yeah. Um, we are gonna be back, fully loaded, ready to go. We're very excited. Um, one of the things we're really wanting to share and thank you for having us today is that our pre-registration is open at playwcyfl.com. So that's the acronym for the league, the WCYFL. So playwcyfl.com. So you can go on, you can pre-register, you can reserve your spot, upload your documents. We recommend using desktop or laptop, not mobile, uh, because yep. we found that when you upload documents, it makes it much easier. But we are so excited, A, to be back, and B, to be open for business. And we're really yep. hoping to get folks on and get them signed up. Yeah, and, and Brandon, you have two sons. Uh, obviously, they're, 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 I think they're out of the age group of the 6 to 12 for Warren County Youth Football League, but they both participated uh, you were a coach, assistant coach at one time. So you know the importance of having this available to the kids in our community. Yes, Doug, it's Warren County Youth Football League is a bit unique in that, you know, we have some tremendous youth sports organizations in our community, both from the county park side, the city park side, the schools and all in yeah. between. Warren County Youth Football is kind of the, the one league in the community that just encompasses everyone, everything from everywhere in Warren County, and including some families and kids that live in outlying counties that uh, decide to come over here and play, and we welcome that as well. 
And so we've had historically anywhere from four to 500 plus kids in our league, which I would guess is probably the largest league in the community. Yeah. Um, I've had the privilege of serving in a lot of different roles, obviously leading up communications for the board now, but I've been a head coach. I've been an assistant coach. As you said, I've had two kids who've played in the league. And so this is a tremendous outlet for so many kids in our community and even prior to COVID-19. And um, you could say this about any sport or activity that you're highly engaged and passionate about, but it's a, it's a competitive outlet for kids. It's an opportunity to learn how to be uh, teammates, how to win, how to lose. You know, Doug, obviously it's been a long time, but you played football back in the day. And I know we've <laughs> nice, shared stories about nice you know, shot. The role that played in our lives. So not only is it a chance to, to achieve what we set out for our mission to be year in and year out, but this year, even more so as kids are now just starting to get back into activities and having been stuck at home and doing the homeschool Absolutely. and the virtual and starting to get back to school and all the other normalcy in their life, this is one more step in that direction. And because right. of that, we think this season is as important as any season we've had. Absolutely. You hang on right there. We're going to have more of Brandon Phillips and Warren County Youth Football League after this break. Stay tuned. More of the Sporting Times on WNKY NBC 40. Welcome back. We're talking with Brandon Phillips, the Director of Communication for Warren County Youth Football League and a very good friend of the Sporting Times. Uh, but that's for another show. Brandon, welcome back. We're talking you. youth football. Uh, I was going through some of the, the facts and questions and things that you have out there on social media information. Interesting, um, you had mentioned four to 500 kids. I would imagine this year, you could you could set a record for the amount of kids that are going to participate in football with the age range from six to twelve. Yeah, and and what a tremendous opportunity for us. And we've always been very focused in spreading our message, communicating with the schools, and um, having opportunities like you've been so kind to give us with the Sporting Times to spread the word. But I would tell you that um, from a board standpoint, we are ramped up more than we ever have. And so we're really going to be pushing this out. And, and how great would it be to see not only three, 400, but five, 600 kids yeah. to come. And I can tell you, uh, we have the capacity for it. We have the resources, the fields. Uh, we've got the uniforms. We're ready to go. One of the things I'd love to mention too, Doug, if you would allow, is for our pre-registration at playwcyfl.com, uh, there's no payment due right now. And yeah. so obviously when we get closer to the season in August and you're picking up your equipment and all the other things that we do in preparation for the season, that's when we'll collect payment as well. Yeah. So this is a great opportunity to go ahead, pre-register, get in our system so we can communicate with you as those dates get closer. You know, what's amazing, I, I read that, Brandon, and, and 50 years ago when I played youth football, the, the, <laughs> you laugh, but but the price wasn't that much different back then, right? Um, right. And, uh, and it's just a, a great, op now the equipment's gotten better, the uniforms are way better, it's, it's much more organized. All that has changed, uh, but what a great opportunity for these, uh, these kids to get out there and, and learn the sport, and more importantly, learn sportsmanship and everything that's involved with a, a team concept. Yes, and you know, like any youth sports league, we rely heavily on volunteers. And so one of the other things I would love to say is if you have coached in the past uh, and still have children in the league, or if you don't and just have a passion for youth football, um, please visit our website and reach out to us because obviously we're going to be on a big push looking for volunteers and coaches to participate in the league. And, and you're right, Doug, and, and you could say this about any youth sport, but certainly in youth football, it does have such an impact on the kids. And I've experienced it firsthand as a father. I've experienced it as a coach. Um, and so that's why I am very passionate about this league and seeing it get back and going and ramped up. And there's nothing like, you know, those game days, Saturdays, Thursdays in the fall, and you're riding out by Basil Griffin Park and you hear the whistles and the pads right. and you see the crowds. I mean, it's you see the same thing with high school football on Fridays, college on Saturday, pro on Sunday. There's just something about football in the fall uh, that gets everyone excited and puts you in a good mood. So we're yeah. very excited to get that back. Yeah, no question about that. And I, and I do want to mention quickly that the Sporting Times is going to, uh, we've committed to live stream uh, a game of the week, so to speak. And it's right. it's just, it's it's... 
it's to highlight the kids, but it's also to give people an opportunity that aren't from this area, that are relatives of these kids, uh, that they can watch it, right? And it's going to be a lot yes. of fun for the sporting times. Uh, we archive all the games so they can go back and they can watch them. But it's going to be fun. And, um, you know, we're not really concerned with uh, how many first downs or how many touchdowns. <laughs> it's, about, it's about the fun. Right, right. And just showing the, the, showing right. the kids off. So it, it'll be fun. Well, we're so excited to have our first broadcast partner, and <laughs> certainly that is one of the things that you guys have done and provided for this community for such a long time, and we're so grateful for that. And with you know last season and COVID-19 leagues, we're really trying yeah. to find ways because of limited numbers to broadcast and show and stream games. And so um, not having a season, we weren't able to take advantage of that, but we are so excited to partner with the Sporting Times and to be able to bring that to some of our friends and family for kids who have those outside of this area who'd love to watch them play. Brandon, we've got about 30 seconds left. Real quick, give us that website again where people can go and pre-register their kids. Right, so it's for Warren County Youth Football League. It's play, like P-L-A-Y, playwcyfl.com. And you can go there. There's FAQs. You can ask questions. You can pre-register, which we would highly encourage you to do. And if you're interested in volunteering, you can reach out there as well. Real quick, we got 15 seconds. Water that plant behind you. I know you got that in the Amazon somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, water that thing, Brandon. Thanks a lot for joining us today. I got it. It's, always, my it's always great to see you. <laughs> and uh, anything we can do for Warren County Youth Football, please let us know. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate it, Doug. All right, Brandon. Thank you very much. We are going to take a short break. When we come back, Taryn Johnson, the married Taryn Johnson, and I will wrap things up right here on the Sporting Time Show, WNKY. NBC 40. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. I want to thank Brandon Phillips and Taryn. You know, I've known Brandon for probably eight or nine years, maybe 10 years. And, um, uh, he's got an energy level about him. I mean, he's like the ever-ready bunny. Uh, he just keeps going, but, you know, as director of communications, his job for Warren County Youth Football League is to get the word out, and I think they're going to have a record uh, registration this year for those kids in football. Yeah, as director of communications, I imagine that you kind of have to be that energizer bunny, which yeah. he certainly is. He was getting me all fired up just listening <laughs> to that interview, Doug. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, it, it seems like after not having last year, you would you would hope and, and you would think that they would have a humongous turnout, and uh, and certainly that's what we hope for, um, and can't wait to see you know how yeah. many kids are able to turn out and play youth football this year. But it's great to have it back. Doug. Oh yeah, you know it's fantastic to have it back this year and be be able to talk about this at this point in the year. Yeah, and he talked you know he talked about the fee not being due until August. Yeah. Um, which is great. You Fantastic. still can register, you can, you know, save up a little bit. And I made the comment to him that when I played, uh, the the cost wasn't that much different. Of course, uh, you know, the the equipment, everything has changed, the look. And by the way, here is a, a photo of me uh, when I played 1968. I wow. played in youth football, and there it is. Uh, I played uh, for the Hamburg Mustangs. Look at that young and, stuff. Um, yeah, well, it's interesting because when you're a young little leaguer, you, you want to play quarterback or you want to run the ball. Mm -hmm. That's it, right? And the coach said to me, he looked at me, threw me the ball. I dropped it. He says, lineman. <laughs> right? Oh, no. Now, we also have a photo of you yes, when you played. And what team did you play for? I played for the Gillettsville Trojans. Just about 45 minutes south of here, Gillettsville, Tennessee. Yeah. North Middle Tennessee, north of Nashville. And I was a lineman as well, Doug. Played yep. O-line and D-line. Oh, yeah. But very fond memories. I was always a big baseball player growing up. Like, huge baseball player. So, I made the switch to football around 10 years old or so, and I was like, hey, what's going on here? But <laughs> it turned out, you know, I was just a bigger kid than yeah. everybody else and really enjoyed it. I, I absolutely loved playing oh, youth football for the Trojans. It's the best, and, and we're really looking forward to, to having some coverage through the sporting times and doing some things like that. But uh, thank you again, Brandon, for, for spending a few minutes with us. Now, let's talk a little baseball. Yes, sir. I, I want to get you up to date. I made a comment before we went to break about a team – uh, that I thought uh, was very impressive, 
And, and the, the team that I'm referencing is the Warren East Raiders. Hmm. Uh, Coach Sanford's team, one senior on that team, Nolan Ford, is the lone senior. But this, they, just, they just took two wins uh, earlier in the week against South Warren. Uh, very good program, although they're young as well. But they're not as young as Warren East. And Coach Sanford, uh, he's got it going. That team right now is 16-9 and nine wow. in the fourth region. And they are uh, five and three uh, in the region. They're ten. I'm sorry. They're ten and four in region, and they are five and three in district. That's impressive. Uh, yeah. So you know, as we get ready for uh, the seeding process, these these district games are huge. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when we get to this point in the season, Doug. But going back real quick to Warren East, it's great to see a young team have success like that. It's always exciting to see, regardless of of the sport, and especially when we're talking about the high school ranks. But Warren Easton and Nolan Ford, he's a guy that we mentioned a lot in football yeah. season and, and getting it done on the diamond as well. Really impressive job by the Raiders so far this season. Well, I, you know, and Coach Sanford's had, you know, they're known for having unbelievable pitchers, right? Yeah. Mark Biggs, uh, Hunter Green, uh, Hawks. I mean, you just, these guys are, are went from high school right to yeah. major league, it's right? It's a pipeline, yeah. They're, they're huge. This year he's got okay pitching, good pitching. But he's got a group of guys that just get after it yeah. and play solid baseball. They're learning. So, you know, we're getting towards the end of the season. So those freshmen are now kind of sophomore yeah. as far as knowing what to do and how to do it. They're not as green as a normal freshman would be. And to have a, a type of team chemistry like that too, Doug, is, is so important, yeah. especially when you get into postseason play. Yeah, no question. Of course, Bowling Green, uh, top one of the top teams in the state of Kentucky, Batting for the team, 349. Uh, pitching is off of the charts, a 1.85 ERA. Uh, they've got guys, yeah. you can go five deep, and they can hurl that ball. They are so good. They're going to be tough uh, to knock off the pedestal this season. So uh, they're doing very well. South Warren, uh, Lady Spartans on the other side, still number one in yep. the state. They just got their first loss against, uh, I believe, South Oldham uh, in the best of the West but a lot of great baseball and softball yet to come this season. Absolutely, Doug, and cannot wait for this postseason to get fired up and our coverage to continue. Great having you back. Thank you for joining us. We will see you next week, same time, same place. For Doug Thompson, Taryn Johnson, have a fantastic week. Good night.